So you got Inner Journey. He's the obvious one, I suppose. Do you have any that maybe an outsider or one that is not as well known that you're looking forward to riding? Brandy Love is one that uh, I look forward <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kevin Doyle. I'm an ex-professional footballer, currently trying to breed some racehorses in Wexford in the sunny southeast of Ireland. Today we're very lucky to have Irish champion jockey Paul Townend here to pick his brain and ask him a few questions. Were you putting this together when you were playing still? Or? Um, I had a few mares here, but my dad like, has been in the family hours for since I was a kid. I plan to come home when I finish playing and get into it a little bit. And probably get into it more than I expected. You planned. Mm -hmm. That can happen, all right. Yeah, but I enjoy it, so that's the main thing, isn't it? And during your football time, would you have always had an eye on the racing and, and gone to, to racing events and things? Yeah, we would have. You have gone as a team, actually. It was a real bonding session. when. When things were going bad, we went to the races. And when things were going good, we went to the, <laughs> we went to celebrate. How did you find the transition? Would you find any any connections really between the race and, and uh, the football side of it? Um, I tried to sort of put the mindset I had when I was a footballer, trying to improve, trying to get little bits better all the time, like I would have done as a footballer, try to do the same. So how actually did you get into riding horses? I can ride horses as long as I can remember. So I grew up around them. Uh, all my family was into racing and as I say, it was bred into me probably. Um, started off doing the hunting and the shows and gymkhanas and trips and around the country every weekend and um, that developed into pony racing and, and onto the track then. I always wonder, seeing you at the track beforehand, watching races, you know what horse you're going to ride. Do you decide yourself what way you're going to ride it or does Willie tell you what way to ride it or is it a bit of a mutual uh, conversation? Yeah, it's, it's a discussion and it was up to declarations when you're picking which one to ride. You're riding them at home and you're looking at them during the week and they generally sort themselves out come race day and if I pick the one he wants me to ride then I'll ride that and if he has a different opinion I'll ride the one he wants me to ride. And you'll ride it the way you want then, decide and hold out the back or yeah, that'll the work. front or whatever you decided between the two of you. So. That, that's probably the same. We're working together long enough now that I have a fair idea what he wants me to do and he has a fair idea what I'm going to do. It's coming up to Cheltenham. I want to ask you, because everyone else wants to know, what are you most looking forward to riding at Cheltenham this year? I suppose the race I'd, I, I, I most want to win this year is probably the champion chase. Willie has never won it. Um, Inner Jameen looks like he's made the transition into open company really well winning in Cork. It's the one that's eluding Willie. I gave him his first Gold Cup. I'd love to give him his first champion chase. and It won't be easy, but I think we have as good a chance as anyone in the rest. Do you have any that maybe an outsider, one that is not as well known that you're looking forward to riding? I think Brandy Love can go right to the top. She's very forward going and, and a great thrill to be up on. And I think she can uh, go on to, to very good things. You're uh, an astute racing man, so uh, what, what's caught your eye? Fernie Hollow beat him all, didn't he, back in his bumper days? Like. He did. His form really does stack up. He's the only horse to beat Paul Bollinger. He hasn't done anything wrong over fences, so he's taken to him really well, hasn't he? Yeah, I've uh, seen him first time out there this year. He was very impressive. And as you were saying to me earlier, he's had a year off and it's probably done in the world of good. So I'm not really going out on a limb by picking him, but um, he'd be the one. I believe Hollywell was bred here by your father. Does that put any bit of pressure onto you to try and breed something as good as him? Yeah, listen, he was a grade one winner. I suppose that's the ultimate aim, isn't it? You try your best, it could take years and years and years and might never happen, but sure, that's the aim you have to aim for. And would you have got a good kick out of watching him run and then would you feel the pressure of, of watching him? You'd, you'd obviously follow their careers yeah. through. Yeah, I would have been in England actually when he was at his best, so I would have been paying close attention. He would have been you know, talking about getting excited watching races and we'd nothing to do with him. My father bred him, but he was, wasn't, didn't know he was sold as a three year old and on and racing, but you still pay attention obviously and you have his, his stock here, or his. Um, you have the page, you have the mayor, whatever here, so you're wanting to know how he does and you'd love him to go on and do well and you're watching him and, and he was favourite for the Gold Cup. Um, didn't win, I think he came third in the end. Um, but yeah, he was, I suppose, the, the, the best horse that has come out here by, by a good way. So far. So far, so far. I like that, <laughs> so far.